The concept behind Bluetooth has its origins in 1994 when Ericsson began researching the idea of replacing the cables that connect accessories to mobile phones and computers with wireless links. As technical details began to emerge, Ericsson quickly realised that the potential market for Bluetooth products was huge, but cooperation, cooperation throughout the world would be needed for the products to succeed. Therefore, the Bluetooth SIG was formed in 1999. But why call a wireless system Bluetooth? There's no hint within the name itself that, re that it represents a wireless communication system. Harold Bluetooth was a 10th century Viking monarch who managed to unite Denmark and Norway. And because formalisation of the concept of wireless cable replacement began in Scandinavia, it made some sense to identify its Viking origin. Furthermore, Harold's unifying approach to conquest meshed nicely with the goal of uniting computer and peripheral for a specification that would hopefully achieve worldwide acceptance. There is certainly no room for ambiguity in the name. Performing an internet keyword search on Bluetooth results in the return of almost no material unrelated to the sh associated short-range wireless system. Right. The future of Bluetooth. Just imagine this. Bluetooth takes a small area networking to the next level by remi removing the need for user intervention and keeping the transmission power extremely low to save battery power. Picture this. You're on your Bluetooth-enabled cell phone, standing outside the door to your house. You tell the person on the other end of the line to call you back in five minutes. As soon as you walk in the house, the map you received on your cell phone from your car's Bluetooth-enabled GPS system is automatically sent to your Bluetooth-enabled computer. Because your cell phone picked up a Bluetooth signal from your PC and automatically sent the data you designated for transfer, Five minutes later, when your friend calls you back, your Bluetooth-enabled home phone rings instead of your cell phone. The person called the same number, but your, ho your house phone picked up because the Bluetooth signal from your cell phone automatically rerouted the call because it realised you were at home. And each transmission signal to and from the cell phone consumes just one milliwatt of power, so your cell phone charge is virtually unaffected by all of this activity. Bluetooth is essentially a networking standard that works on two levels, physical level and protocol level. Bluetooth's physical layer is a network that transmits data via low power radio waves. It communicates on a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. This frequency band has been set aside by International Agreement for the Use of Industrial, Scientific and Medical Services. A number of devices that you may already use take advantage of this same radio frequency band. Baby monitors, garage door openers, and the newest generation of cordless phones all make use of frequencies in the ISM band. One of the ways Bluetooth devices avoid interfering with other systems is by sending out very weak signals of about 1 milliwatt. By comparison, the most powerful cell phones can transmit a signal of 3 watts. It's quite a big difference. In this technique, a device will use 79 individual randomly chosen frequencies within a designated range, changing from one to another on a regular basis. In the case of Bluetooth, the transmitters change frequency 1,600 times every second, meaning that more devices can make use. Since every Bluetooth transmitter uses spread spectrum transmitting automatically, it's unlikely that two transmitters will be on the same frequency at the same time. This same technique minimizes the risk of portable phones or baby monitors will disrupt Bluetooth devices, since any interference on a particular frequency will only last a tiny fraction of a second. Bluetooth systems create a personal area network or PicoNet that may fill a room or may encompass no more distance than that between the cell phone on a belt clip and the headset on your head. Once a PicoNet is established, the members randomly hop frequencies in unison so they can stay in touch with one another to avoid other PicoNets that may be operating in the same room. So let's have a look at some of the protocols Bluetooth makes use of. In any wireless network setup, security is a concern. Devices can grab radio waves out of the air, so people who send sensitive information over a wireless connection need to take precautions to make sure those signals aren't intercepted. Bluetooth technology is no different. It's wireless and therefore susceptible to spying and remote access, just like Wi-Fi is susceptible if the network isn't secure. With Bluetooth, though, the automatic nature of the connection, which is a huge benefit in terms of time and effort, is also a benefit to people looking to send da your data without your permission. Bluetooth offers several security modes and device manufacturers determine which modes 
to include in the Bluetooth enabled gadget. In almost all cases, Bluetooth users can establish trusted devices that can exchange data without asking permission. When any other device tries to establish a connection to the user's gadget, the user has to decide to allow it. Service level security and the device level security work together to protect Bluetooth devices from unauthorized data transmission. Security methods include authorization and identification procedures that limit the use of Bluetooth services to the registered user. As long as these measures are enabled on the user's phone or other device, unauthorized access is unlikely. A user, a user can also simply switch his Bluetooth mode to non-discoverable to avoid connecting with other Bluetooth devices entirely. If a user makes use of Bluetooth network primarily for syncing devices at home, this might be a good way to avoid any chance of a security breach while in public. Still, early mobile phone viruses have taken advantage of Bluetooth's automated connection process to send out infected files. However, since most phones use secure Bluetooth connection that requires authorization and authentication before accepting data from an unknown device, the infected file typically doesn't get very far. When the virus arrives in the user's cell phone, the user has to agree to open it and then agree to install it. This has so far stopped most mobile phone viruses from doing much damage. Other problems like bluejacking, blue bugging and car whisperer have turned up as Bluetooth specific security issues. Bluejacking involves a Bluetooth, Bluetooth user sending a business card which is just like a text message to other Bluetooth users within a 10 meter uh, radius. If the user doesn't realize what the message is, he might allow the, uh, the contact to be added to his address book and thus the contact can send in messages that might be automatically open because they're coming from a known contact. Blue bugging is more of a problem because it allows hackers to remotely access the user's phone and use its features including placing calls and sending text messages. And while all this is going on, the user doesn't realize it's happening. The Car Whisperer is a, is a piece of software that allows hackers to send audio and to receive audio from a Bluetooth car enabled stereo. Like a computer security hole, these vulnerabilities are an inevitable result of the technology innovation and device manufacturers are releasing firmware upgrades that address these new problems as they arise. But are there more serious threats that come with implementing Bluetooth into our society other than security concerns? As wireless devices become more prevalent, there has been increasing concerns over the biological effects of long-term exposure to RF radiation. If microwave ovens also operate at 2.4 GHz, am I slowly being cooked each time my Bluetooth transmitter comes on? Indeed, one of the possible effects of RF radiation is thermal, where the body tissue absorbs energy faster than it can be dissipated. The result is that the tissue heats up and can sustain damage. A microwave oven, for example, provides power density of around 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared to cook food. Bluetooth uses the microwave radio frequency in the same spectrum as we mentioned a minute ago, 2.4 GHz. Uh, previous electromagnetic hazard studies dating to the 50s through the 80s, including more recent studies, concluded that low power signals with frequencies as high as 1.5 GHz to 2 GHz do not cause irreversible damage to human tissue. The radiated output power of Bluetooth devices is low when compared to other widely used mobile devices. So it is assumed that the potential for health risks are also correspondingly lower. The Bluetooth devices can operate continuously or sporadically, so total exposure to EMF radiation is variable. So would you be able to feel the heat produced by exposure at the MPE limit? Probably not, because power densities of about 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared combined with prolonged exposure is required before measurable tissue heating occurs. We've established that Bluetooth is efficient, safe and secure and we're certainly to see a lot more from it in the future. So, whether you're using your Bluetooth headset or your Bluetooth dongle, here's wishing you a very wireless future. Now, if only I could find my Bluetooth enabled wireless phone. <laughs>